Hi everyone, Paul Bertarelli reporting from Aero and Friedrichshof in Germany. You know, electric airplanes are nothing new here. We've been seeing them for almost 10 years. What is new this year is that the Expo has devoted a full haul to electric, and in this video we're going to take a tour of what's here. By far the major player here is Siemens, and we're in their booth at the moment, the giant electrical equipment company from Germany. They've got a big booth here with a bunch of cool equipment, including this motor, so might as well start here. So the first thing that we're going to look at here is the SP70D propulsion system, which you see on the table in front of you. And this is a very nice uh, package. Uh, in essence, you've got the motor, and this is a motor that gives you 70 kilowatt continuous at 2,600 RPM. And what uh, we're doing with this is at the moment uh, is that it's part of the E-Flyer, the by aerospace two-seater. Um, and we've just uh, registered this for uh, type certificate uh, certification um, under EASA, so we're very, very excited about that. And this motor and this propulsion system um, is actually something that um, we are going to see in a lot of different projects um, down the line as well, um, because it's quite versatile. You have the possibility to um, look at extensions or possibly stacking, depending on what the, the system requirements are, uh, that you want to handle. Well, this, this, is, this is not something that uh, is, is just in, in the very long term. This is something that uh, is going to be visible on the market um, in, the, in the near term as well. So just before now, we were talking about the SP70. So this was the, a, a smaller of our, our engines. What we have here is the SP260. This is actually the second iteration already of, of this engine. Um, and this is quarter megawatt uh, class. Um, propulsion system and uh, this is today flying already um, on, on test platforms but it's actually going a step further now and there are two examples in the background um, of companies that are using the 260 in order to develop their uh, aircraft and um, they are exciting for two reasons as well for me personally because um, we, we're seeing something that is again not a traditional um, front engine but rather on the smart flyer, we have uh, a, a tail tail rotor, tail tail engine, which is something that hasn't really been done um, to a great degree yet. And um, this is this is a very exciting project. And then on the other hand, we have Aviation's Alice, which uh, which is a fantastic uh, plane um, and a nine nine seater plane, and also tr starting to draw on these on on the benefit of distributing the propulsion by having um, a tail rotor and two wingtip propellers as well uh, in order to improve the, um, the efficiency of the plane. So we've talked about two different systems that are very near term where we are providing our partners with the system so that they can develop their aircraft and bring those to market. There are also things that we're doing that are a little bit more distant and one of these you can see behind me here and this is actually an application using these components that we have developed and that we're continuing to develop to do things that today are not possible in terms of propulsion. So this is really trying to harness the power of distributed propulsion that becomes possible via electric motors and electric um, systems in, in general. And what you can see here, this is a concept for um, a plane that is using the SP70, which we saw earlier, and using that in a, in a single engine uh, plus in a stacked configuration at various points in order to give you an airplane that is virtually silent that you're not going to be able to hear anymore from a, from a distance of 50 meters. So really trying to draw out those benefits that you get from distributed propulsion. Now most of the electric airplanes here at Air are what you might call aspirational, which a less polite person than myself, and let's be honest here girls, would call vaporware. But one that isn't is what's behind me. That's the Pipistrel Alpha Electro. They've been out there for a couple years. They got about 50 of these out in the wild. And while they can't be used legally for full up private pilot training, the airplanes that are out there are gathering useful operational data and maintenance data that will be applied to the next generation of airplane, which should be out later this year. Alpha Electro now, let's say about 50 plus, which are flying all over the world from Australia, US, Canada, in Europe, Finland, 
France, Switzerland, uh, Hungary, Slovenia, yeah, for sure. They use for or personal use or training in the country with uh, which allow this. Next generation of Alpha Electro will be a type certified uh, electric airplane, so will be the first EASA type certified airplane uh, meant for uh, PPL for training, so for PPL license. We'll have a approximately one hour 10 or one hour 20 minutes plus legal reserve. Improvements, water-cooled batteries, which will uh, extend the, the battery life. That is the most uh, thing, uh, six hundred kilo maximum take of mass. Will be available, let's say, I will say starting with uh, June 2019, so this year, in this year, yeah. Let's say if you will fly a normal flying hour, so let's say 45 minutes when you will land, you will have still about 35% of energy. So in 40 minutes, you will be up to 95%, so ready for the next hour. Now, most of the electric airplanes are pure electric, which means that there's an array of batteries, they drive the motor, and that's it. But because of continuing limitations on battery capacity, increasingly we're seeing more hybrids, and this is one of them. Most of the aviation hybrids are serial hybrids, which means they're like a diesel electric motor. You've got an engine driving a generator, the generator drives the electric motors. In the case of a locomotive, it's uh, traction motors. This one is a little bit different. It's from an Italian company called Alpi, and their idea is a parallel hybrid. So they've essentially attached an electric motor, that's this part, to a Rotax, 100 horsepower Rotax, and this device is a clutch mechanism. So they've got batteries in the airplane, and if the engine fails, the batteries can take over and power the airplane for about 15 minutes. In this case, it's going to be a twin, which they expect to fly later this year, sometime in the fall of 2019. And the other thing it can do is can provide a power boost. So if we've got a 100 horsepower Rotax here, this electric motor can work in parallel through this fairly sophisticated clutch mechanism here and provide about an extra 70 horsepower. So you can see how that would really boost performance on takeoff, say on a high density altitude day uh, somewhere. On the other hand, you do have to haul around those batteries to provide that energy. And this stuff is not light. As you can see, these heavy duty uh, power cables and there's a motor controller over there and that doesn't even begin to get into the batteries. So we'll take a look here at some of the other hybrids. So now you've seen what a parallel hybrid looks like, but it's by no means the most common architecture in electric airplanes, if there is such a thing as common architecture at this stage. So in the next segment, we're gonna take a look at a serial hybrid. Um, it's a full electrical uh, ultralight. So um, we have a, a Geiger system built in with uh, two engines in, in one compartment. So we have two control units and two battery packs, so we have a fully redundant system. Um, on starting, we are running both systems at the same time. In cruising, we uh, run it on one engine and then the system is balancing it down so that we get equal loading state, uh, status in, in both accumulators. Uh, the accumulators are the same as in, in car industry. And in, in this type, we have uh, built in um, a piston engine to, to, as a range extender. Because we had the problems, we have to fly in different uh, areas in, in northern Germany or southern France. And the problem was that the capacity of the accumulators is not enough to fly big distances. The power of the electric engine is uh, 50 kilowatt uh, endurance and 70 peak. It depends on how much fuel you take with you because uh, the range extender takes about seven liters an hour. So with 35 liters, uh, we can fly five hours on the piston engine plus three quarters of an hour, so nearly six hours. But the tank has a capacity for 70 liters, but you won't never need it. But the idea is 
to, to take off and when you are in cruising level uh, and you have to fly big distances then to run on the range extender and not use the batteries anymore so that you have the batteries always as a if you if you need to to restart after a bad approach or something you you have to have the batteries yeah? because then the range extender is not enough the piston engine is a swiss swiss uh, motor uh, an helvetico 250 um, cubic centimeters four stroke water cooled this is normally a kart engine from kart sports um, we plan to commercialize in the end the electric system but we know that three quarters of an hour may not be sufficient for uh, 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 the later version so what I want to have it at least two hours of electricity uh, to, to, to fly with only the electric system but then we need to have better batteries as we have today because we could double the amount of batteries in the plane but that's not the idea because at the moment the batteries alone are 90 kilograms. Project MAHEPA which stands for Modular Approach to Hybrid Electric Propulsion Architecture, is an European Union financed project led by Pipistrel and aimed at developing the next generation of components for hybrid electric propulsion and also the flight testing of these powertrains into two different general aviation type aircraft. The first test aircraft uses an internal combustion engine to run a generator and to charge the batteries, while the second is based on fuel cell technology to prove a completely zero emission flight. And the main objective is not only to test the components, but also see through an extensive flight testing campaigns, which are the pros and cons of hybrid electric propulsion. We have a not enough operational experience of hybrids. And so this project tries to bridge this gap, understanding the real life operation of hybrids. The project has a very strong technological development part, but has also an analysis and study dedicated into 19 and 70 seater concept to see where the future of hybrid is going. So what to make of all this? Your guess is as good as mine. It's possible to make way too much of the fact that Siemens, Boeing, Airbus, and other big players are involved, and therefore the practical electrical airplane is just around the corner. It's also possible to be totally cynical about it and believe that electrics won't happen for 50 years. I think the reality is probably between the two. The numbers on hybrids don't really pencil out very impressively yet, but battery technology is improving fast enough that pure electric trainers like the Electro seem likely to get market traction maybe three to five years. My guess is that in, the, in that time frame, it will take a lot more than one haul here at Aero to contain all the electric aircraft. We'll let you know. For Web, I'm Paul Bertarelli reporting from Friedrichshafen. Thanks for watching.